Welcome to Everyday Linux User and welcome to a month on Sovereign OS. For new users to the channel, every month I install a different Linux distribution and use nothing but that distribution in order to get a proper sense as to how easy to use that operating system is and to highlight any gotchas that may occur. It is a review but based over a longer period of time. So I installed Zorin towards the beginning of February and for those of you who are unaware, Zorin is one of the more user-friendly Linux distributions and is aimed at the masses. If you are into comparing distros, then Zorin sits with Linux Mint, Ubuntu and Pop OS. And these are all distributions that are very focused on ease of use. So installing Zorin is an absolute breeze and setting up hardware is incredibly straightforward. You will see here that I have installed my usual devices, which are Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and a printer. What you don't always see is that I have a USB speaker and a wireless HDMI transmitter and receiver. And I never really show you these devices as they always work without any setup at all. The average Joe will find Zorin incredibly straightforward to use. There is a panel at the bottom with the menu and quick launch icons and the theming is excellent. And for those of you who think theming doesn't matter, well it does. The icons are perfectly spaced across the quick launch bar. The menu is easy to navigate and so on comes with a decent set of applications by default. When it comes to theming, you can choose from a set of default layouts. And there are more that come with the pro version or you can theme the system yourself. I mentioned previously that there are a decent set of applications, but there is also the software manager that not only comes with Zorin packages, but there are flat packs and snaps available as well. Most new users won't care that a package comes in a particular format, they just care that the package exists. And so whilst having flat pack snaps and Zorin packages installed alongside each other seems like a lot to take in and probably a fair amount of bloat, it does make it easy for the ordinary user to get going. Zorin and Mint are very similar and in a previous video this month I highlighted how similar they are. But Zorin does do a few things differently. For instance, Zorin defaults to Wayland and not X. And it also has the Windows app support packages that you can install, which will enable you to try out different Windows apps and games. I'm not sure how successful that is because it's a long time since I tried running any Windows software on Linux and generally I use software that is compatible to Linux. Did I come across any major issues using Zorin? No, I didn't. It was in the main flawless. Everything seems to fit together very nicely indeed. Would I recommend this to the everyday Linux user? Absolutely. But that is it for now. Next month I will be using Manjaro and the month after that Kashi. I also plan more Linux terminal tutorials as last week I created one about installing applications using apt. So if you are a Debian, Ubuntu, Mint or Zorin user, feel free to check that out. And that ladies and gentlemen is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.